Police have identified a potential suspect in the murder of Rachel Morin. It's a case we've covered here. The Maryland mother of five who was found dead off a popular hiking trail nearly two weeks ago. Police were able to link an individual to the crime using DNA. In the past 90 minutes, police announced they were able to link a man to the crime using that DNA, and it is not her boyfriend. DNA evidence is, is part of nearly every modern day investigation. And in Rachel's case, DNA evidence was collected by our forensic services unit. That DNA was analyzed by the Maryland State Police and it was ran through the National CODIS system. DNA evidence is, I mean, this DNA evidence has come back as a match tied to a home invasion and, insult, and an assault of a young girl in Los Angeles this past March. Unfortunately, that suspect has not been positively identified, but he did leave behind his DNA. The Harford County Sheriff's Office obtained video from the L.A. Police Department showing the suspect leaving the scene of that crime he was just talking about. Now, you're looking at the video they showed at the press conference. That's the guy that they believe also brutally murdered 37-year-old Rachel Marin. Police say he is still on the loose. That was him walking out of the house of the parent home invasion and assault. He's said to be five foot nine, 160 pounds in his early to mid 20s of Hispanic descent. Officials believe he acted alone, was likely someone Rachel didn't know. It's possible or likely a random act of violence. Police are calling on the community for help identifying him. Remember, Rachel was reported on August 5th by her boyfriend, Richard Tobin, after she set off for a hike around 6 o'clock that Saturday evening, never returned. A lot of people on the Internet were originally questioning his possible role in the murder. But now he is absolutely not the suspect. Officers found Rachel's car at the trailhead the next day. Hours later, at about 1 o'clock Sunday afternoon, a volunteer searcher found her body. Joining me now, Jesse Weber, anchor for the Law and Crime Network, News Nation legal contributor. He's been following this story uh, closely. Jesse, this is an astonishing piece of video yeah. that not only have they linked it with DNA, but they now have a very you know, somewhat clear image of who this guy is. But here's the concerning part. That happened in March. And they don't know the identity. They don't know how he left L.A. They don't know how he got to Maryland. That's the part of that video that's shocking to me. Because in a normal case, wouldn't they have been able to identify him? If you watch the video, the door... Let's put up the video yeah, as we talk. talking. The yeah. door closes. Yeah. And so I don't know the circumstances of this. I don't know who the alleged victim is. But how did that person not positively identify that individual, and how were they not able to turn it? So that there's a hand actually closing the door right. at one and, point, and so that's concerning because that lets me to believe he had the method to leave that state. Now, right now, they don't know who he is, and they don't know where he is right now. So that's concerning to me that they don't know, and they're asking now the the publics for help uh, in trying to find. Let him. me play another piece of sound. This is number two. This is from the press conference that happened in the last uh, couple of hours, talking about what they know about where this guy may be. We don't have any clue where he could be. We don't even know if he's still in Hartford County or in the state of Maryland, because obviously in March he was in California, and then here in August he was here in Maryland. So we don't know if he's still here or not. So this is now a national search. That's what yeah. makes this different than the L.A. case. Now this is a national spotlight. And it's interesting because this is only part one of the investigation. They're going to need more on him than just DNA. You and I both know that defense attorneys are able to attack DNA. So they have to have something more in Rachel's death, whether it's surveillance footage, phone records. The DNA is a start, but it's only the beginning of this case. And now they have to see where it goes. I do find it fascinating. They put it through CODIS. And that wasn't able to help them determine who the identity of it was. Right. But they obviously had his DNA on file. Correct. In connection with this assault that we're watching the video of. Again, that's L.A., that door, L.A., separate entirely from a popular hiking trail in Maryland. Now, her boyfriend yep. had been someone everyone always presumes it's the boyfriend, right? Well, not only that, he had a criminal record. Right. And he made a statement. And, and now let me read it. Yeah. He said, this is number five. He said, earlier this month, he said, I love Rachel. I would never do anything to her. Let the family and I grieve. Yes, I have a past, but I also have 15 months clean and have changed as a person, please. 
And that's important because we've seen those statements made when you question the husband, you question the wife, you could question the significant other, and somebody will look at like, oh, of course, he says he didn't do it, but let's see where this is in a month. Well, according to investigators, he is no way connected to this. They have somebody, they just don't know who it is. You know what? Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.